Well, that's not worth putting in the video. Well, hello there folks, this is Lyage, and welcome to a video for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. This video is part of a mini-series discussing some of the new Silkvine moves added to the various weapon types in the Sunbreak expansion. Specifically, the focus of this series is to cover a few of the new abilities that at first glance may appear to be either unimpressive or simply overshadowed by more exciting abilities that share the same slot with them. Now my goal with these videos isn't necessarily to convince anyone that these abilities are the best options, but instead I just want to show off what could be possible with them if they are used well in a hunt. So without further ado, let's introduce the skill that we will be covering in this video. Okay, so today's skill will be the Sheathing Retreat Silk Bind for the Lance. This should hopefully be a shorter video than the ones for the last couple of skills that I covered, but I did originally think that I could fit 5 skills in a single video, and then I ended up talking about Wire Step for 30 minutes, so we'll have to see. Alright, let's start with a bit of background information. So the Lance is a weapon that I have always loved to play, but as of Monster Hunter Rise, I never quite managed to play it in a way that felt good to me. Now of course this meant I was quite excited for the new moves that Sunbreak would add to the weapon. Initially when we got the previews for each weapon that showed off two of the new moves, some of us had rather mixed opinions on what we were shown for the Lance. Just compared to most of the other weapons with really flashy new attacks, what we saw for the Lance appeared to be really subtle. However, as it turned out when the full game launched, these moves ended up being quite impactful new additions to the weapon, which was something that couldn't really be conveyed in a preview video. But for those of you who were following the previews, you would know that these new moves are the Shield Tackle and the Skyward Thrust Silkbind, and neither of these are what I will be covering today. You see, while both of these moves didn't appear very impressive, once we found out what the final switch skill the Lance received was, it made perfect sense why the other two were chosen to show off in the preview. Because here's the thing about the final new Silkbind sheathing retreats, it looks kinda pathetic. So let me get started with some basic information about this silk bind. The sheathing retreat can be equipped in the switch skill slot for the input of left trigger plus the top face button. Now there is only one other switch skill that you can choose in this slot, Twin Vine. For most of the other skills I feature in this mini series, there would usually be a bit of competition for the slot that could make the skill hard to justify equipping. However, in this case, I have to say that the skill we are giving up probably won't make you lose too much sleep. So I may be spoiling the rest of the video right now, but while I don't feel that the Sheathing Retreat will ever become the core of any type of playstyle unlike some of the other skills that I've talked about, it is certainly worth something that at least it doesn't replace any skill that you can't live without. Okay Twinvine, I am sorry, I suppose I was a bit mean to you right then. I do actually want to toss in a quick aside that while maybe not one of the most popular Silkbinds in Base Rise, Twin Vine was actually substantially buffed in Sunbreak and even feels pretty usable now. I do think that the move may even have some interesting potential for some fun playstyles, and I've even been considering making a video just for it. So while it sounded like I was writing off the skill as not very good, I think what's more appropriate to say is that the skill isn't necessary in order to be good with the Lance, but it certainly does have potential if you plan on using it. I do however think that the casual lance user may find more general usability in the sheathing retreat skill, which is why I'm making this video to spotlight it. Alright, now for the part of the video that probably won't take nearly as long as the other silk binds, how to use it. When we put in our silk bind input of the left trigger plus the top face button, we will throw a wire bug behind us and do a great big jump up and backwards. As suggested by the name of this skill, during the jump we will sheath our lance, and that's it, we're done. Well, not really. Allow me to go over some properties of this move. So first, I want to cover the intended use case of this skill. As you might guess from the name, the skill can be used to retreat from a dangerous situation. At the start of the move's animation, we will gain some iframes that will allow us to evade through any incoming attacks. However, it is worth noting that these iframes do not last the full duration of the move, as we can easily be hit out of the air during this. Also as another thing to keep in mind, this skill only costs one wire bug, but it has a slow recharge time. So make sure not to use it too often or you will very quickly find yourself not having any wire bugs available. 
Now I think many folks may wonder why we would even need a move like this. With a weapon like the Lance, we should already have plenty of options to keep us safe. Of course we have our strong shield and even though you can take chip damage at lower guard levels, we also have abilities like Anchor Rage and Instablock that will block all damage. So for a weapon that is so focused on letting us stand our grounds, being given an ability that lets us run away may not only seem underwhelming, but maybe even somewhat insulting. But setting my pride aside, I can admit as someone who played a lot of Lance in past games that there have been many times where I definitely could have used the sheathing retreat. You see, even though a Lance user can tank a lot of damage, when it is time to heal, finding an opportunity to get out of danger can be quite tricky. And this really just comes down to the weapon's short evade distance and long sheathing time. Now with that in mind, the sheathing retreat solves both of these problems in a single move. Okay, so hopefully this at least sheds a little bit of light on the use case for a skill that otherwise feels pretty underwhelming at first glance. It is definitely not a silk bind that you should expect to use regularly unlike some of the others. Really we should only find ourselves needing to use the skill as a sort of panic button, and if you didn't really care much about Twin Vine, then having Sheath and Retreat in your loadout is definitely something that will help add a bit more survivability to your hunts. Alrighty, so I would like to think that I've at least given a few of you folks an idea of what this move is all about. However, I would bet that there are some of you who have been sitting here thinking everything I just covered was pretty obvious. Like even if you never tried the move out, it shouldn't be too hard to understand what its general use case is. Well don't you fret because we're not done and oh boy I have got some pretty spicy tech to share now. Okay maybe I shouldn't hype this up too much. I'm definitely not the first person to discover any of this, but maybe some of you will at least be like, huh, I hadn't even thought of using this move that way, and if so then I can feel accomplished. So let's just jump right into it. First off, have you ever considered using the sheathing retreat not as a retreat but as a gap closer? By default of course, the sheathing retreat will always take us away from where we are facing. It then follows that if we want to do this in a particular direction, we just need to face in the opposite direction. So while this works pretty easily, we can even do this without having to physically turn our character. It might be hard to see this in my footage, but just pushing the analog stick at the same time as inputting the silk bind will be sufficient to do the move in your chosen direction. Just remember that it will be the opposite direction of what you input. If you watched my video on the reverse blast silk bind, this is a pretty similar behavior to aiming that with one exception. The sheathing retreat cannot be aimed mid combo. If you input the silk bind while in a combo, your directional input will be ignored and you will just do the move backwards. This isn't a huge deal, just make sure to end your combo before doing the silk bind. Now let's actually focus on the approach to the monster. Because of course we sheath our weapon when we do this move, we will probably want to draw it and attack when we get to the monster. Our first option is to just do this after landing, which isn't too bad, we can easily turn around and start attacking. However, another cool thing we can do is perform a mid-air draw attack. While we are in the air, we can also attack in any direction we want, so even if our back is to the monster, just pointing towards it and attacking will ensure that we hit. Now admittedly, with the slow wirebug recharge time on our move, this does make it a bit of an expensive gap closer. In that regard, Twin Vine can do the same thing for cheaper, but this does have the benefit of being usable at any time instead of requiring us to keep renewing our wire attachment. Plus we are not done yet, because we can use our sheathing retreat to go even further. So check this out. Once we are in the air after performing the move, if we press the dodge button, aka the bottom face button, we will perform a mid-air dodge. You may recognize this as the extra mid-air dodge you get after a regular wire dash, so what this basically means is that the sheath and retreat is being treated as a normal wire dash. Because of this, we can also press the right face button to hang from a wire bug after this. This does act a bit weird though because the wire bug hang swings us in the opposite direction of our motion, which kills our momentum. If I want to go for a distance, I would then just go for the midair dodge. And by the way, this midair dodge is also affected by the evade extender skill. This of course applies to your normal wire bug movement too, but in this case, look at the crazy amount of distance we can get when adding this second jump to the sheathing retreat. 
finally, if you found yourself in a different country from the monster and wanted to heroically speed yourself back into the fight, you can tap the right trigger in the air after your jump to go straight into a dash attack to literally hit the ground running. So have I blown anyone's mind yet? Well I doubt it, but I do have one final thing that I think adds just a bit more utility to this move. Now how many of you folks have ever messed with midair item usage? Well, I'm sure we've all slurped a potion while jumping off a ledge, but I'm more referring to a few specific items that can be used directly after a wire dash. Probably the most popular example of this would be the large barrel bomb, which has this hilariously over-the-top animation. Well, since we've discovered that the sheathing retreat basically counts as a wire dash, then you can probably guess what's coming next. Yup, so once we do a sheathing retreat, we can use any item that would be usable after a wire dash. So for example, we could very easily jump over a monster's head and dunk a barrel bomb on it. Well, in Master Rank this probably won't be worth very much, but it's pretty funny still. Now on the more useful side, we can use this move to let us quickly toss out things like flash or sonic bombs. Because the lance is so slow to sheath, it would usually be pretty difficult to use one of these with good timing. But with the sheathing retreat, we now have the ability to capitalize upon opportunities to use these items. This still won't match up to the speed a sword and shield can use its items, but still, it's nice to have the option open. Okay, I promise I do not have any more secret tech that can be performed with the sheathing retreat, well at least that I know of. As usual, I will now wrap up this video with a few clips of me applying what I have covered into some demo hunts. Because this move isn't one that we will mix into our core gameplay, this clip segment won't be quite as long as the past videos. Instead, the clips will just be some quick examples of some of the skill's use cases, so let's check them out. First, let's get a couple examples of using the sheathing retreat as a proper retreat. This first case is pretty simple. I am pretty beat up and I need to heal, so with a sheathing retreat, I can put some distance between me and the monster and do my heal. Now this next case is a bit different. Even though I blocked this fire breath, the ground flames have set me on fire. So the lance has a bit of a problem when this happens. When you roll a few times, you can put yourself out if you're on fire. However, the lance cannot roll, and thus we are unable to easily stop it. Then I suppose in this case, the sheathing retreat is pretty useful, because once we are sheathed, we can then roll as normal to put that fire out. Similar to Fire Blight, we also have Hellfire Blight, which can also be put out by rolling if you do not want to explode. But we can do even better. I'm sure many of you know about how if you wire dash with Hellfire Blight, you will drop the Hellfire as a little mine that can give you a free flinch against your target. Well, it just so happens that the Sheathing Retreat will also drop this Hellfire off of us right away, so you can do things like this. It is worth noting that many weapons have silk binds that can do this too. Basically any silk bind that launches your character in a direction will probably do the trick. So if you're curious, play around to see if your favorite Silkbind can do this. Anyways, getting back on track, here's a quick little example of gap closing with the sheathing retreat. I'd say this works pretty well in practice, but do still keep in mind the slow wirebug recharge. I would recommend making sure you always have a wirebug remaining when you do this, because if you get all your wirebugs stuck on slow cooldown, you might not have one when you really need it. Okay, now for some fun item usage clips. Let's start with one of the easier ones to use, Flash Bombs. Rathalos is the obvious easy target for these because he's flying so often anyways. Still feels cool to ground him like this though. Next up we have Sonic Bombs. Admittedly these things only have a few very specific targets. Also, they don't even work when monsters are enraged, so when we're fighting Afflicteds, we don't get a lot of windows. On Diablos, when we are fortunate enough to not have it angry, this window is pretty easy for us to hit though. Now this stun is really hard to get even if you're sheathed and waiting for it. I basically had to guess the window before it happened to actually hit the stun. Let's see what else we can do. How about using throwing kunai? And while the barrel bombs really aren't that great for pure damage, we can do stuff like this with them. Finally, we've got a couple handy hunting helpers that don't mind being thrown at things. I always neglect to use these, but the elemental beetles are always handy to keep on hand. Ooh, 
with trap bugs, we can get away from a monster and stop it from chasing. And, uh, maybe this is useful somehow. Well, I think it's about time to wrap things up, so let's go over some conclusions. First, I do not think that the sheathing retreat is a silkbind that you will find yourself using constantly. This isn't a bad thing though. Not every silkbind is meant to be one that you are spamming as often as possible. When it comes to what we can use the sheathing retreat for, I honestly think that the scale is more versatile than I originally thought. We of course have the use case of getting you out of danger, but both the repositioning and item utilities of this move are cool bonuses that I didn't originally consider. So maybe if you were originally underwhelmed when seeing this silk bind, perhaps you may now want to toss it in your loadout and see if it provides you just a bit more utility for your lance gameplay. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Once again, I ended up taking quite a while to get this video finished. In this particular case, I had the video about 90% complete a month ago, but I just kept putting off finishing it. So I do apologize for the delay, my plan still remains to get two more videos out in this mini-series and then taking a look at some other potential content for Sunbreak. Of course, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more in the future, the like and subscribe are always appreciated. Anyways for now, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.